Today we're talking about the two trillion dollar stimulus package that was passed last week. Wow, that feels like a month ago. Specifically, the part where a quarter of it went towards creating a slush fund for struggling industries. Now, the coverage of this one has been a bit strange because the majority of it was, we're making a slush fund for corporations. That sounds bad. Share this to make a bunch of other people angry, and remember to like and subscribe. Turns out there's a bit more of a plan here than leaving a pile of $500 billion in a field for corporations to enter into a Hunger Games competition over. Although voters might prefer that option. Today my goal is to see exactly what's going on with this $500 billion, because it's starting to get distributed. Now the first thing to know is who's in charge of distributing this money. What do you know, it's the one man I report on more than Donald Trump. The Federal Reserve's Jerome Powell. It's good to see you back on the show. With all this social distancing, I've been beginning to miss you. <sighs> so what happened was Congress told the Federal Reserve now seems like a great time to invest in some corporate bonds. Here's some money. You know, buy low, sell high. Go to the open market and buy bonds of major companies that are struggling so they have some short term cash. Corporate bonds are essentially corporations selling off IOUs to the public. If you give me money for this piece of paper now, I'll pay back whoever is holding this paper at the end of the year, and then some. Of course, there's a catch with the Federal Reserve. According to current rules governing the Federal Reserve, they can only buy very specific types of bonds. Already, more than half of companies that borrow through the corporate bond market aren't eligible to get help from the Fed under its current rules because they aren't classified as investment grade. Yes, the Federal Reserve isn't allowed to invest in risky companies. Makes sense. Except that, boy does that open up quite the paradox. Federal Reserve, you can only bail out companies that have absolutely no risk of failing. If you're thinking like an investor, that's obvious, but not if you're thinking like a rescuer. This would mean that major companies like Macy's and The Gap, who are furloughing most of their workers as their sales collapse, might not qualify for the massive backstop for companies that Congress just passed, because their finances are so bad that their debt is rated as junk. Of course, advocating for the government to start buying a ton of literal junk is not going to win you a re-election. Right now, the government has set itself up pretty well to make a ton of money off of this, playing it safe with corporate bond markets with the intent to sell when the conditions improve or collect on the IOUs when the time expires. This of course has led to lobbyists spending top dollar to adjust this set of Federal Reserve purchasing rules that are being tweaked this week. Lobbyists are working to shape the rules governing this $454 billion loan program for big and medium sized businesses, outlined in the law and backed by the Fed, which Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin must publish within a week. Ok, so why is the Federal Reserve taking risks with bailout money a bad idea? Well, besides the incredibly obvious answer, let's talk about it, because pulling at this thread really unravels the Emperor's clothes. This is where things get a lot more smoky back room than even I was expecting when I started writing this episode, so really let go of any preconceived notions of what's going on here, because whoo boy. Let me start by asking this question. The Federal Reserve is currently in an unlimited bond buying program. So who gives a hoot that we're adding $500 billion to infinity? Uh, boss, that's okay, so seriously, who cares about this new money? Well, this is where you need to take a step back. Where is the Federal Reserve getting unlimited money for unlimited bond purchases? Short answer, they don't get it. They create it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Only the Treasury Department can print money. But there's no printing involved here. It's all digital. I could write you an IOU for money I don't currently have and nobody's printed any money. I realize this is incredibly confusing, but bear with me. In the early days of central banking, money creation was a physical reality. Central banks have since become much more technologically creative. Uh oh. 
The Fed figured out that money doesn't have to be physically present to work in an exchange. Because of this, they can literally spend unlimited money on assets. Once you exit the physical realm, the only limitation is how fast you can type zeros. So, alright, how does this work in practice? When the Fed buys government securities or extends loans through its discount window, it simply pays by crediting the reserve account of the member banks through an accounting or book entry. In case member banks wish to convert their reserve balances into hard cash, the Fed provides them dollar bills. An easy way to think about it is to picture the Federal Reserve as a bank for banks. You know, I don't carry my entire life savings in cash. I keep some of it in a checking account that I can call on if I spend all my cash. Similarly, banks have reserve accounts at the Federal Reserve. Huh, that's why they call it that. Where they store their reserves. The Federal Reserve keeps an inventory of cash on hand to meet the needs of the depository institutions. The metaphor goes even deeper though. If there's a run on my bank where everybody tries to get their money out at once, well, the bank's going to have to go to the federal government for a bailout. If there's a run on the Federal Reserve where all the banks try to get their money out at once, well, they're going to need to get their manager, the Treasury Department, on the horn at once. Additions to that supply come directly from the two divisions of the Treasury Department that produce the cash. The Bureau of Engraving and Printing, which prints currency, and the United States Mint, which makes coins. Yep, we took the scenic route to get there, but it didn't take too long to end up face to face with the guy running the printer. Now this is where we return to today's story, because while the Federal Reserve is in charge of this current bailout, that $500 billion was sent to the Treasury, the Federal Reserve's manager. Seems odd. We're buying corporate IOUs with Federal Reserve IOUs and hoping that if something goes wrong, the other person's going to pay. I thought the whole point of this was that someone needed real money at some point. Well, there's a middleman I've only implied. Banks and bond issuers. The way this shakes out from beginning to end is, a corporation needs money, so they sell IOUs for cash to either a bank or an investment grade issuer. Then the Federal Reserve comes in and says, hey, we'll credit your savings account with credits if you sell us those IOUs. They say yes, give us the IOUs for credits, and everybody shakes hands on all the good business that was accomplished today. Of course, this all circles back to a new question. What the heck kind of bailout is this anyways? How's this helping anybody? The thought is, if the Federal Reserve can increase the cash in the system and demand for these corporate bonds, well, more companies will be able to take out loans. It's a bit of a weak excuse for a bailout because the central bank's efforts aren't designed to bail out companies that might go under, but instead to offer a reassuring backstop to private lending markets. Yeah, we're really trying to shove a square peg in a circular hole with this one. But if we put enough cash behind it, it should work. The Federal Reserve can target specific companies and industries IOUs so that those groups can issue and sell more IOUs on the market. So now that you have a basic idea of how the system works, this is where the craziness comes in. Brace yourself for this one. The Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve together could lend more than $2 trillion to $3 trillion to keep corporate America going for several more months. Wait, 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 wait. How do we get from hundreds of billions of dollars to trillions of dollars? Someone's confident in their investing. One word, leveraging. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin suggested that the new money could be leveraged by the Fed to back some $4 trillion in financing. Basically, if I make $4 trillion worth of corporate bond purchases using IOUs and one-eighth of them fail, well then I can get that $500 billion to cover my losses. If more than an eighth of them fail, I'm in trouble and I'm going to have to call Steve Mnuchin and have him fire up the old inkjet printer because I'm now losing money. Let's just hope there's no randomly flashing low toner warning or printer connection issues. 
If less than an eighth of the bonds fail, well then the government just earned itself a pretty penny that we can send back to the treasury to pay down our debt. Simply put, the Federal Reserve really doesn't want to lose more money investing in bonds than there is in that fund. Now this might sound like uh, in any way an exaggeration, but here's what the New York Times had to say. Because the Fed expects most borrowers to pay it back, it does not need one for one support. As a result, a mere $10 billion from the treasury can prop up $100 billion in Fed lending. And voila, that $454 billion Congress dedicated to Fed programs in the aid bill can be multiplied many times. It's official, we've reached Enron levels of creative accounting here. I mean, just look at that headline. And the Fed's money magic machine will turn $454 billion into $4 trillion. I know I took the long route to get to this answer, but with this in mind, you really don't want to lend money to people who are a risk, or that entire house of cards is going to come toppling right down. And one final piece to mention before I leave you is, in this report, coverage keeps fluctuating between sale in the bailout fund is $500 billion and $454 billion. The actual Federal Reserve's fund size is that ugly 454 number, but there are more traditional industry loans going out to airline and cargo companies that make up that other almost $50 billion that rounds the entire thing up to the more satisfying $500. $100 billion. <sighs> so that's exactly what's happening with the bailout slush fund you've probably heard about. I hope I was able to help you understand the issue better as opposed to just giving you a massive nosebleed and a migraine. Whew, wee, this was a complicated one. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.